My bad, Chase. <laughs> Chase is an it's asshole. It's kind of hard to gauge with the dog wood. Back to Team Fat Kid Cheese and Fat. It is Thursday's party cast. I am Jason. I am Alex. This is Dennis. This is Chase. This is Dooley. Yay, everybody's here. Yay. We got us a little sixer. I don't think we're going to do all six, but uh, we do have a, an actual roulette today. Oh, you got a pen down there, buddy? I got it ready set up. All right, so what we're going to talk about today is um, we're going to talk about some food trends. Wait, what's trending now? What's going to trend next year? Uh, so we got we got some topics, and then and then we got like a little like topic to pull everything together uh, toward the end. Wait, so, that's gonna happen as you expect. Yeah, because that's the way it always works out. He's got an idea. It's, 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 hey, man, there's there's a segmented plan for this podcast. <laughs> I just planned it out about five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> and it's golden. That sounds about right. <laughs> Fucking send it. <laughs> so, Dooley, uh, you, uh, you gotta fucking do your finger work. Mm. <laughs> Anytime now. Uh, you, you just gotta pull up uh, what's trending right now. Like, a quick Google search should get us there. I'm assuming it's gonna be like some plant based bullshit. Um, As usual. No yeah. one sweets. I think sweets? Like right now, right now? How many bakeries have opened in the past five months? It's fucking crazy, dude. Like, I feel like there is the sweet spot. Which opened there? There's a bakery right across from our baker. Yeah, <laughs> that opened like literally across the street. Uh, I mean, there's like one down the street. Uh, the See, oranges. Uh, I think. Orange I think something. carb hating is the thing of the past. Hot like, time. I mean, the way the way bakeries are popping up. Like, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't even know if like, I should call that sweets. That's just like breads, and, but baked goods. I'm going baked goods are the new trend. They're okay with the carbs as long as it doesn't come from animals. <laughs> what the fuck? Is there a, carb, a carbohydrate animal I'm unaware of? Uh, it's, the corn, it's the corn dog. Oh. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's, that's how we get all our animal it's carbohydrates. Google, Dilly, Google, uh, hot food's trending right now. And it's probably not going to sound that cool when you Google it. <laughs> or let's go with what foods. That works, too. Okay. Yeah. Scroll down. Scroll down to something that's not an ad. Yeah. And then click it. There you go. Herbs and roots. All right. Top 21 food trends of 2021. Number one, pantry meals. I mean, we've done pantry raids before. Yeah. I could see why. We, we could probably stand to do two more. Oh, yeah, we probably could. <laughs> uh, four more. I could understand why that's been a thing lately, though. People have been the stuck first. in quarantine. Like, born of quarantine, cooking and making ends meet. Like, raid the pantry. You yeah, know? Man, you know, if you're not making that fifteen dollars at McDonald's, you got to cook out of your pantry. I don't think that's how it was born, though. No. This is interesting. Number two is what the fuck is mental that? health cooking. Food and nutrients play an integral role in maintaining overall mental and cognitive health. After a long and arduous 2020, mental well-being has never been more important. Who the fuck is like, yeah, I really need to go get more salmon because that's gonna make my brain better for dinner. Uh, uh, number three, no surprise here, uh, yeah, veganism and vegetarianism. I feel like that one's... I, that, uh, I was just about to say, there's like a new thing coming around, like the flexitarian. <laughs> so number four is the flexitarian diet. Not everyone is ready or willing to make the switch to a total plant-based diet, which is why the trend of flexitarian eating is also on the rise. It's for all those people that say, yeah, I'm a vegetarian, I only eat chicken once a week. Uh, the concept of being a flexitarian is simple. Meat becomes a once in a while or only on the weekends food rather than part of your regular meal rotation. Not happening in my house. So you're like, yo, I'm gonna eat some. Sal- I mean, I eat some salads, you know, just because like I I realize that I probably do need vegetables in my life. Yeah, we have a flexitarian diet. Salads are like Saturday Sunday foods. Yeah, just don't just <laughs> be careful of the veggie pasta. Uh, I do never. Oh no, yeah. All right, so number five is. Carb alternatives. Fuck you. I like food. I was literally about to be like, how far? Keto brought back low carb. Uh, Things like 
pizza crust, gnocchi. Uh, obviously, have been using substitutions with cauliflower being a leading uh, a leader in the pack. Uh, versatile ingredients replacing things like rice and flour. Leader of the pack. Oh, good song, dude. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Number <laughs> ever. That can't be a trend. That's just that's not. It is a trend it. right now, dude. That's... Like since like you know the whole COVID All thing, right. like they started like the takeout. I don't count food. that as like a food trend though. That's just a, that's a business trend, not a food trend. Say, but, that, okay. That's been around for like decades takeout all right so here's the thing here's the thing if you're gonna do takeout don't grub up it go straight to the source yeah and order from the actual restaurant not you know get off your lazy ass and drive over there now now look if you're intoxicated i'm all about delivery but if you if you are capable order online and just go pick the shit up because hey you're saving the you're saving the business a lot of money well not even the because if you dine in you uh Jesus, uh, we'll take if you if you dine in, they don't waste money on paper. You eat on a real plate, and they wash. And also, and again. if you go to the place, you could see what your wings actually look like. What we're talking about next is low waste <laughs> foods. So, with concerns <clears throat> of climate change on the rise, more people are worried about uh, eco concerns. This is, of course, trickled into the food scene, making lower zero waste one of the upcoming food trends of twenty twenty one. So, uh, repurposing food scraps that may have previously ended up in the bin, like broccoli, carrot, uh, and Tops. potatoes. Uh, there are many ways you can cut down on waste in the kitchen in any step in this direction. So, basically, like, uh, trying to, you don't have to reduce packaging carrot. or... Well, they're talking about carrot tops, potato peels, and broccoli stems in particular. But, obviously, a lot of people do uh, you know what? Eat those compost potato skins, and shit like guys. that. Eat those potatoes. That's where all the nutrients are. Dirty potatoes. I mean, the dirty, off, dirty so chips. So here we go. This is this is kind of getting into what I was talking about earlier. But number eight is elevated desserts. As attention to healthy eating takes center stage this year, desserts are far from being left out of the picture. In fact, desserts are becoming a form of art on their own with new innovations and trends from around the world. Is that uh, like a green sponge cake? It does say, if he would stop jumping back and forth, what? it does say with the usage of unique ingredients and even plant-based resources. So I'm assuming that does look to be some sort of a... Okay. Cake is pretty much plant-based. I mean, yeah. you, you have to use an egg or, or two. And milk. But, I mean... Well, if you're doing chocolate cake, you have sour cream. To it. looks like a dish sponge. This one, I'm surprised, has taken so long. Number nine, fusion cuisine. I see. I think like fusion like really became popular in the '90s, and it's like not really transformed for, transformed further than the taco what we're looking at right now. So yeah, the, this one I'm assuming is the Mexican Korean blend, uh, Chinese Peruvian, yeah, Korean um, tacos. We've definitely we have gone to a Korean. Oh, what was it? That was in Palm Springs, wasn't it? What, yeah, what, that, that was shit delicious. was that shit was amazing. Uh, so I'm definitely a big fan of the fusion. Uh, Ten, home baked bread, another uh, trend born of quarantine. Home baked bread. <coughs> yeah, remember when no, when no one could find flour. Yeah. Uh, number eleven is herbs, roots, and mushrooms. Dennis. Yeah, I'm out. <laughs> you don't uh, want that mushroom risotto? I'm good. You sure? I just don't know a lot of people that like mushrooms, so I guess this. I'll get the truck running, dude. We can do this. I like a good grilled portobello. <laughs> you can eat it on the way. On the grilled way. portobello, I'm um, cool right? with like on a hamburger or a steak. Other than that, I do not eat mushrooms. See, I'll eat. I'll eat. Neither do I. I no, no. Dooley, this requires you to continue scrolling. Well, we know this. Oh fuck! Man. Number twelve, plant-based burgers. Fucking screwed again. We're just gonna, <laughs> gonna scroll on past that. Nope, we're gonna. I fuck fuck this fuck one it. too. Number thirteen, plant jerky. Fuck y'all, man! Isn't that like banana chips? Well, I basically, but I guess <laughs> this one's definitely more on the mushroom side. Uh, number fourteen, it's spreads nut. and butters. Nut butters. Uh, there seems to be a type of spread butter butters. for absolutely anything, but that won't stop even the food trends of 2021. If you've gotten comfortable with almond and cashew butters, now is the time to seek out macadamia nut butter. Too predictable? How about watermelon seed butter? The opportunities for spreads are truly endless. Watermelon seed butter? Is that really butter? Uh, I don't know about that. Cooking okay. oils, number 15. Coconut oil and olive oil may need to make some room in the pantry. An upcoming food trend in 2021 will be experimenting with new oils in cooking. Sunflower seeds, avocado oil, pumpkin seed oil. Avocado oil is pretty good. Nope. I haven't, haven't, I disagree with this one completely. Number 16, chickpeas. 
I mean, they're deep frying them now as a snack. Uh, I mean, they're obviously hummus. Is that just, also a spread. Is that just not in this area? Because <laughs> I haven't seen anything in this area with chickpeas. Uh, number 17, again, I feel like yeah. that's cheating. It's not really food, but, you know, okay. Craft uh, mocktails. Uh, so, a alcoholless a cocktail. A smoothie. Basically, yeah. <laughs> uh, number, number 18 goes the complete Welches. opposite direction. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, kombucha booze. So, boozy kombucha and seltzer. So, basically taking the things that weren't alcoholic and making them alcoholic, as opposed to the last one, which was taking things that are alcoholic and making them non. Sounds great, guys. I love that. Which way is the trend going? We don't know. Fucking put them both in. Uh, <laughs> number 19, milk alternatives. Well, now that milk that. alternatives like soy, coconut, and all of them have had their moment, it is time for a new variety of options to reign. In the upcoming year, you can expect to see offerings like rice, hemp, and oat milks flooding markets and menus as, riding, as a rising food trend in 2021. Like they did milk out of rice. Uh, like I was bond. more interested in the hemp. Well, I don't know I'm how you sure get you were. milk out of hemp. What's that THC milk, dog? Uh, number 20, the Instapot. I think that one's been around for a while. Yeah, it's, I mean, it definitely took a... I feel like that could be uh, a quarantine uptick. thing, you know, okay. I, I, mean, I think it was prior to... Yeehaw, honey. Uh, 21, Air Fryer. The producer's favorite. I feel like that is definitely... Uh, I got a clean ours. They came out, what, a couple years ago, and they've definitely... You mean convection ovens? No, they've been around for a long time. No, but specifically <laughs> specifically air fryers. Like, I don't know, they definitely, uh, they came out a couple years ago, and they've been holding strong. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, it makes quick work of things. I'm, I'm disappointed I don't see the sous vide up there. Oh, yeah, because that's trendy all the time. Well, hey, we got baked goods and desserts, so I still feel pretty good on my whole bakery bakery set up there you know that made sense to me yeah well chase hmm. we missed you on monday or most of it so uh how trying, was, how i'm trying to week? remember what because like last last week i think i branched out into it and i think i fucked up with the wrong week are you talking about monday at the what you, this podcast. I was just saying, how was your week, Chase? That's, no, that's you all. said we, you missed a, you missed me Monday. Yeah, you weren't here for I'll, the last podcast. I'll, I was on the podcast. Not all of it, but I was still on it. But we didn't do how was your week? Okay, okay. So okay. how was your week? It okay. It same. It's normal. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking worked. Dude. Chilled at home. Didn't do much. Cleaned around the house. Playing Farmer Simulator 19. Yeah, fucking right. <laughs> And UFC 4. So, yeah, video games and uh, chilling. And not doing a lot of shit. Sorry, I disappeared, guys. I uh, forgot that, you know, the wife had charity work to do, so I had to go empty the back of her car. By the way, I threw a bunch of shit in the front end of the food truck. <laughs> we'll get that out later. Um, yeah, she had, uh, she's uh, going to do uh, for Panda's fight. Uh, nice. she's, she's going to pick yeah. up. Uh, they did a toy drive at Sandbar, so evidently they have a bunch of crap, so they called her and were like, hey man, we need vehicles that can move shit. Yeah. Like, they're like, we just started and there's three bicycles. Like, <laughs> it's like I mean, it's it's awesome, you know, yeah. it's like, it's for a good cause, and she was like, shit. Like, like obviously she doesn't want to leave at four o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah. On a Monday. Yeah, on a Monday at that. But she was like, you know, you know, volunteered services. She was going to take the pickup. Yeah. But I told her it's got like 30 miles and until empty and you got to get gas. How do you keep oh. your wife from driving your vehicle? Don't put gas in that bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got to put gas in it tomorrow, though, but whatever. One thing I was I was trying, you know, hopefully, like, getting her to do it, so I didn't do it. <laughs> reversing, <laughs> reversing roles. Reverse psychology. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, usually, like, when I get in her car, there's, like, no gas. I'm like, shit. Yeah, stop getting gas. She's like, I hate getting gas. I'm like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to stop at the gas pump. <laughs> <laughs> See? That'd be a good delivery service, man. Like, people just come around, like, you know, I need gas. I need to go to work tomorrow. Yeah, so, see that crime, that crime under underworld going. Good. <laughs> I mean, like you know how they have like you know the old like 
I don't want to call oh, them old school, trucks. but like the no, like the like the pickup trucks that have like the gas tank in the back yeah. for like tractors. Yeah. You know, just put some regular in there. <laughs> Drive around like. Problem swing is, swing by the house, man. Give me like fifty bucks. Uh, problem is, uh, sloshing around all that fucking damn. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's all the sediment friction, and all that. Well, fr- well, friction, like you know, kinetic energy and everything. One of those part. That's why Ooh. it's plastic. Dude, yeah, it's in a plastic bin. Mm-hmm. I mean, your gas tank's probably metal. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. The last, the last gas tank I changed was metal. <laughs> it was in a Bronco, though. It was an old school Bronco. The bitch was big as fuck. <laughs> 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 All right, so uh, our next trend, uh, we're going to look into trends that are happening next year. We're going to get ahead of the game here. Uh, we're going to see what's going on, what they believe will be the trends of the future in food. Um, Hold up. Because this is always hard to get in front of like you want to like you don't want to be like you know i'm trying space to space food space food but toothpaste you, you don't want to be get it. you don't want to be kfc triple p toothpaste that's gross <laughs> you don't want to be like the is it though i mean like <laughs> yeah yeah dude if that's even possible that would be amazing bacon garlic cheese sauce toothpaste <laughs> not oh. like toothpaste but like in a like package toothpaste tube. Oh, yeah, oh, for, for oh. space food. Oh, okay, um, come on, man. You said toothpaste. And be, I'm just, like, thinking that, like because that, that's what I always like, called space food. Okay. Space food is toothpaste. Well, I, I mean, in, in it's a pouch and you. <laughs> oh, I'm totally on the whole legitimate toothpaste thing. <laughs> like wow. I just feel like I'm not. Mm, I could get down with that. <laughs> <laughs> you go through a tube at night. <laughs> Speaking of toothpaste, oh, God. did you notice how you could squish up the the basically the bag of the toothpaste, the tube, the tube, a, whatever. I, I never had a bag of toothpaste, bro. <laughs> That's that powder. Hey, shop, man, bro. you haven't been through hard times. You don't know what it's like on the streets. <laughs> <laughs> That's that dollar twenty five dollar tree purchase right there. Yeah, but man. you could squish out the tube as much as you want, but it still comes out in strips. It goes through a hole, dude. It's an extruder. Are you talking about like the when color. there's three different colors in a tube? Uh, okay. So you can squish it like, up as really much as you want in the side of the tube. Let's be clear. It's Aquafresh. That's the only one that really has like three different colors. Mm, Colgate. Colgate. Colgate has three different colors. They have red, blue, white. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not red, blue, white, but sometimes <laughs> orange and white and fucking some Why is your toothpaste orange? Because they can't make it red. It's probably patented. It's creamsicle. Crest. <laughs> your creamsicle fucking toothpaste. That sounds disgusting. Cool. Oh God! Yeah, no, I was on no. space food because we were talking about f- future foods, and it just <laughs> reminded hey, me of toothpaste yeah, hey, you pouch. Just, you just rolling up the. T- yeah, I get you, man. It's, yeah. it's not really toothpaste. I think it's like those little applesauce things, yeah, like that, for kids. That, that's actually a cap. way better, yeah. way better description. Yeah, yeah. The applesauce packages, yeah. like gogurt, maybe like something that along too. that line. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? But like bacon, garlic, cheese sauce, and that <laughs> for yeah. space food. I mean, like, it's, bro. Only, it's gotta be in a microwave or all power. I'm saying I don't is think NASA microwaves in All I'm space. saying is if NASA wants some team fat kid. Just strap it to the outside, man. The solar power will heat it up. Hey. hey. Or freeze it. <laughs> it'll keep it'll keep you fat. There will be no microbes <laughs> alive. I'm just trying to figure out how to heat it back up. <laughs> See, they, I mean, heating. They have no one they have that technology cold. though. This is like not, they're not eating like some of the, the meats and shit the, cold. The crackers with the the plastic oh, red, the stick. red stick, yeah, that you smear the on cheese your and cracker thing. I don't know. Yeah, what yeah like called. fun packs or some shit like that. I know what you're mm. talking about. Yeah, the lunchables. No, no, man. no, no. no. Like, I, like, you I got know like, what you're talking you got, like, about. Six crackers. This, this was like a snackable. I, 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 yeah. I literally think it was just called cheese and crackers. And then it was like cheese on, it was like you, you, a little pouch. Yeah, you had like a, on you side. had a square. It was cheese, and then you had a square of crackers, and you had a little red stick that yeah. came on the crackers. It's a spread. It's yeah, spread. and you just yeah. Try. Fun snacks or some shit. I mean, okay. you do know that we're not doing like trends of the '90s, right? Because I admit this oh, would probably right show up right there. Handy snacks. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, and like if the you dippers, put... the dippers too. That was the yeah. chocolate shits. I yeah. Think. I mean, they had chocolate. They had like the sticks. They had the crackers. Yeah. And there was all kinds of different yeah. shit they did. And like now, if we could like because once the bacon cheese sauce is not cold. Yeah, it looks like that yeah, shit. Yeah. Like, even though we're, that, that's a processed product, I believe. Like, it's a processed cheese. We're not using a processed cheese. But once that shit gets cold, man, it is definitely spreadable. Yeah. It's 
Now we have a new out. Ne- we're gonna have to try that. We still gotta work on cheese sticks. <laughs> cheese. cheese sticks. <laughs> we're gonna work on cheese sticks. I mean, <laughs> all right. Pretty sure we got one we could do a test run with that's in there right now. Uh, so twenty twenty two food trends. Yeah. What's this beer? I went with pumpkin ale. That's probably not a bad guess. Five point four twenty five. I've used four point five. Who? Oh, you oh you wrote it down. I wrote mine down. I was yeah. like, damn, dude, you're good. I'm like, Marzen four point eight. Oh, I like that. Uh, I'm gonna Wish give I it twenty four. What that was? That's a good fucking. And Marzen is like the fall beers. Fall beer, like not pumpkin, but fall. Toberfest. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'll give it a three. See, I thought Toberfest was like just a lager. Mm, it might be. Or an ale, actually. I think Oktoberfest is just... I'm going brown ale on this, though. Yeah, I just because I don't want to ride uh, the, the Marzen train. train when I don't know what a Marzen is. But it does seem like, like on the cup, it's lingering like a, a brown ale. And it does kind of taste like one, too. I'm going to go Fest beer. <coughs> Well, yeah, burr, burr. without saying Marzen. Burr, burr, yeah. burr, burr. <laughs> uh, s- shit. Uh, let's go. Let's go six point five. Uh, I've used. I don't think we're gonna get, but I would say you know like uh, like like a thirty two, and um, I'll give it like a, a two and a half. There's something in here I'm not caring for. Yeah, I'm money. I'm I'm on the two and a half uh, lightness train. Uh, I'm gonna give it like a six. Like if you could taste the color, I'm gonna of give it a beer. seven. I'll that give it a seven. It. Yeah. No. <laughs> six eight. Six eight. Yeah. I'm worried. Like sorry. I'm, sorry. I didn't mean to talk over you, Chase. I was and like, then, but uh, if you could taste the color of this beer, that's what it tastes like, right? I'd use like forty. Is there a rust beer? Is this beer old? <laughs> rusted nail. I mean, that, Shit, I was about to say, there's a brewery day. we go to that has a rusted nail. nail. Yeah. Oh, that's an amber ale. I'm gonna go brown ale. Is it amber? Mm-hmm. Uh, six percent. I didn't know that. Um, really I've used forty. I'm gonna give it a three. Yeah, but if that's <clears throat> if you could taste the color. That's if you could taste it. brown, <laughs> it has like a caramel note in it, like a little bit. Yeah, Monsieur Call. We have completed. Was that your face? Yeah. Well, it was the headphones. <laughs> Got it. This is Smash Bandicoot Session Amber. It's a four I and a half love percent. the name. This uh, is by I feel like today's Fun been Guys like, Brewing. I feel like tonight, today's been like an 80s, 90s like throwback day. Fun Guys Brewing. There you go. Yeah, it was pulling up Nintendo 64. <laughs> Which is funny because it was on PlayStation. <laughs> it is probably over. <laughs> there you go. It started on 64, though. Do you have an IBU? No, I, I do not. Mm-hmm. 15. 15 IBUs? Oh, wow. That seems low. Fresh Baby Crew's always been Sony. Started on on the original PlayStation. Yeah. Oh, let's, now we got to Google that shit. What? Afterwards, yeah. We can do it right now. We're, yeah, we're done with that one. Good. Smash Bandicoot. Uh, no, it's... <laughs> Okay, keep going. Crash Bandicoot. Oh. <laughs> uh, That's fine. It found it earlier anyway. Uh, fuck, I don't know. Original do system. Probably should have went with the original release. It might have been multiple platforms. Yeah, PlayStation. Sony PlayStation. <laughs> well done. I don't know why you ever question stats. <laughs> the, the only reason why I did was because I have played it on 64. I don't doubt it, but the original was. Well, I, yeah, I, I get that. It says right there. Obviously. Was well, Crash Bandicoot on the Obviously. 64? Yeah, it but says right there. I, I I played it on both systems. Oh, no, but, that's saying he has. Yeah. Have you, anyone seen the meme going around where it's like uh, Easy E sitting like inside of a. Nintendo 64 and he's like cruising around on my 6 <laughs> <laughs> and he's no, in I like haven't. a Nintendo 64 it's pretty fun that's awesome <laughs> alright food trends of 2022 the upcoming trends that we don't know about yet no, but we all want to get in we all want to be there before it happens no we don't we really don't 
Definitely not that one. I guess it depends on, yeah, it depends on which one. Uh, <laughs> if it involves money, maybe. Number one. Sober curiosity goes all in. This trend has been growing for a few years and has seen a resurgence thanks to super boozy pandemic, which drove alcohol intake to increase to worrisome levels. To help raise awareness and around drinking too much, we've witnessed the rise of sober October and dry January. Not the fuck around here. Uh, <laughs> Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but alcohol-free options. No one gives a fuck. All right, continue. Yes, what's, Jason. What's a worrisome level? Asking for a friend. <laughs> we're probably there. I'll say the vote. Looks like half a bottle a night. <laughs> we're, we're probably there. Uh, Party next door. Number two. I like how your level is, like, really up there. <laughs> like, if you go to a party next door, that's a worrisome level. Like... Okay, so number two is bottom up on functional drinks, which is basically healthy drinks. Uh, is that more kombucha shit? Basically. Um, Probiotic soda. Yeah. Have you, did you guys not listen to Monday's podcast and see what we drank? <laughs> Reducitarianism. What is that? Plant based options have exploded in recent years. Can you, someone give me a quick. What do, you, what do you got, stats? I don't even know. What the fuck? It's basically just trying to... Eat less? No, uh, it's... Waste less. Well, it looks like they're trying to use plants instead of animal-based products because of, yes, it uses less waste to produce. Which, again, doesn't... See, that's, that's like... That's shit that doesn't deal with the food. Like, it's how it gets here. Yeah. That's yeah. not... Fruity vinegars, number four. At least we got to something that's actually edible. You know, I mean, I guess the use of original fruit vinegar, apple cider vinegar, is uh, yeah, as a health it. tonic. Which and shot every day. Now they're going to be uh, doing more fruity vinegar. Right, so a pear? Like, what are we talking about here? Doesn't Mango say. jalapeno living vinegar. Okay. Okay, I mean, I can get... I can get behind that. It would be great on salad. I don't know how people are going to feel about a living. So it has a live culture in it. So it's the mother yeah, still yeah, in the yeah, vinegar. That's, that's, that's the whole thing, yeah. You're supposed to have the mother in it. Number five is uh, South American flavors. Uh, the easiest way to relate this is the Berea tacos uh, that's been coming up a lot. Um, ceviche is another one. That statement. <laughs> ceviche is another one that uh, is kind of big. Look, man, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I didn't know what a Berea's taco was until it came up on social media. Like... They're yeah. delicious. They're fucking delicious. <laughs> Number six is food waste. Look, this is fucking repeats, man. Yeah, it's food waste fighters. Again, this has nothing to do with the fucking food. Like, it has to do with how the food is made. This is production business. This is not fucking food trends, and this bothers me a lot. Number seven. I'm playing nope. Dooley Search. Fuck number seven, too. Brain supporting foods. You can keep scrolling. I'm not reading Salmon. that shit. That was it? That was it? On today. There's also the healthy ones, that's why. Well, oh, damn oh damn. well, that's because... Right. There we go. <laughs> that's more our <laughs> speed. 16 <laughs> foods trending southern chefs. That's what we wanted. <laughs> why the fuck would you click on anything that said healthy? Right? <laughs> it was the first one that popped up. <laughs> it was probably, that doesn't mean click on it, Dooley. It was probably an ad, dude. Sponsored by. Hey, you gotta look at what you click on. All right, so we've been through most of these. We're gonna we're gonna scroll probably Nostalgic fairly quickly. Nostalgic treats. There uh, we go. So number one is actually the mocktails. We've already been through that. Uh, cocktail is cocktails. Uh, number two is nostalgic treats. So looking back at you know uh, uh, Dunkaroos. Yes, uh, that's a good example. Uh, uh, what Simplified we just nourishing well, foods that invokes snacks. childhood the memories. Cheese and crackers. Yeah, the handy snacks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, number three is portion control, which I. <laughs> Find interesting because I know that uh, I, I I'm think on a both lot of that, sides of the fence here. I think a lot of that's going to go to cost, though. I yeah, think my... portion control is only coming into play because things are getting more expensive and people want to pay the same, so you're going to get a little bit less. Uh, I mean, I feel like I thought know, I was like down to a personal kind of thing. Well, like my portion control is my plate. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like if have you're you looking, seen your plate? If you're looking, <laughs> here's the thing: though. size this table. If you're looking at that's portion, why they have different size plates. If you're looking at portion control, like looking at the French and looking at us, is completely different. <laughs> uh, we have no portion control in America. That's, there is no such thing. Uh, Home of the all you can eat buffet. Yep. And fucking <laughs> number four, return the to tradition. Spots. After nearly two years of home cooking and eating more casually, people are ready to indulge in fine dining experiences once again, adding a bit of glamour and luxury back into their meals. I I, I believe that. I but I also believe that, like, 
in this tradition of when going toward like fine dining people are also looking to get more elevated food and not spend you know they, they want their they want their money's food. worth for what they're getting yes. and the experience that they're getting too like i'm willing to pay for quality man but like if you send me out one scallop that i just spent 20 fucking dollars on right it better be fucking amazing like and it better be a pretty decent size scallop too well, i mean i'm talking like, about like if the scallop was like this fucking well yeah I'm, I'm just saying like you don't want like some little like baby scallop kind of thing coming out and it's like 25 dollars for this better be good savory breakfast it's is like number five <laughs> savory <laughs> breakfasts alex I know you're more on the sweet side of breakfast, correct? Uh, you know what? When it comes to breakfast, I could go either way. Because I'm not going to lie. If I go to IHOP, I, it's sweets. Okay. I'm getting pancakes, and they're going to have sugar all the fuck over them. Mm-hmm. But if I'm going out to, like, a restaurant, I'm not going to call IHOP a restaurant. Are we going to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to eggs, eggs and bacon with toast breakfast guy anywhere I go. Even IHOP and, like, Waffle House. I, the most I'll get is a country fried steak with eggs and bacon and all that shit. Every, like time, every time I go to a new breakfast spot, I will always get the biscuits and gravy. Yes. Now, Damn. Damn right. my next time may so not be that. Like, I might branch out, get the French toast or something next time, but I, no, that's like, if I'm going to find out if you're a good breakfast spot, I'm going to get the biscuits and gravy. If you can't handle biscuits and gravy and two over easy eggs, I'm not fucking coming back. See? Amen. I still, I, amen. Still, I still haven't been <laughs> fucking back to the rustic spoon, and I'm sure that their breakfast isn't all that bad, but their biscuits and gravy sucks dick. <laughs> and a little I'm not even like I'm not gonna knock the rest of their menu. I didn't have it, but their biscuits and gravy is not where I'm put, at. Like, was it carrots? It's like sweet, yeah. It's like a sweet gravy. It had parrots and carrots and peas in it. It was just like yeah, they called weird. it like a farmhouse gravy. That's weird. And I, look, whatever the fuck you want to call it, it's great. It, not me. I'm not going. Like, nope. That's that's not out. out. How no, was the biscuit? No more breakfast. Uh, I mean, the big biscuit was pretty good, okay. but the gravy ruined it. Because sausage gravy. And I mean, I've had the pleasure of having breakfast with the butcher and. He was like, it's either the biscuit's good or the gravy's good. It's true. You, you hardly ever get, get both, both at the same time. At the same time. Usually yeah. you get, I, I will say, if you go to like a diner, like a classic diner, you usually get a really good gravy with a cheap-ass biscuit. Yeah. Because they're just doing like the frozen stuff, but the gravy's on point. And I'm not going to lie, I think I'd rather have a better gravy than a, and a shitty biscuit yeah. than a really good yeah. biscuit and a shitty gravy. Yeah. However, I have found one place. Only, be, only because I like to excellent. smother my biscuits in the gravy. Oh yeah, but right. I mean, here's a question: Do you like to put your eggs on top? Because I put my eggs on top of the biscuits and gravy. Yep, after I try you it, did. Cut them right. up, get all the, the yolk on I will on put there. that gravy eh. on fucking toast. I will, they doesn't necessarily like, no. Like, yeah, like, I, I can see where you're going because like I've my country place. fried steaks. <clears throat> when I do that with like eggs and bacon and yeah. toast, like <laughs> I, I'll do. One of the eggs on toast with bacon, and then I'll put the bacon on the country fried steak with one of the the over easy eggs or like the sunny side up eggs, depending on how I, I get them whenever I do get them. But that's like the only two ways that I get them. I right. put all that shit and together. And just the butcher has the face. diamond in the rough. I have found a place where you can get both at the same time. At the same damn time. Same damn time. Ray Ray's at the Mayflower. See, that's um, where I thought you were taking me, but yeah. you took me to the other place. Well, they weren't. <clears throat> They were, was open. They, they were closed. That day? That day, yeah. Would you like to pass me cups or just stare at me, Dooley? I'm trying to think of that um, place, uh, First Colonial, and um, uh, I believe it's... Thought you were doing um, new cups. Talking That's, about Rick's Cafe? Yes. Rick's yes, Cafe? Yes. Damn good biscuits. Lost gravy my, sucks. I lost my it's, cup. They, they, the gravy sucks, but they, they the got biscuit, a damn good biscuit. country fried steak. Yeah, it's the size of, yeah, yeah. It's the, size of the plate. But, but like the steak itself is good. Go to Ray But like the gravy, I was like, ah, it's missing. It's missing something. See, I'm out. Okay. Go to Ray Ray's. All right. Gravy get, sucks him out. He's got a dish called the No Way Ray Ray. All right. It's a biscuit. It's biscuits with a longanisa sausage gravy. Nice. And then a deep fried chicken thigh on top with over easy eggs and some sriracha and green onions. So, and what? Where is this Ray Ray's? Ray Ray's is over down the ocean front on Thirty uh, Fourth okay. Street okay. in the inside the Mayflower. Okay. It used to be like the Mayflower used to have their own restaurant. In yeah. There. And uh, the the Lagunista sausage, uh, just for everyone listening, is a Portuguese sausage. Yeah. And it's we've a, had it here several times because usually I just... It's a chorizo-based sausage. Yeah. Well, yeah, usually yeah. I just grill oh, it. Yeah. Okay. We, I mean, if we're going to talk about successes, I'm going to give a shout-out to Mom and Pops in Norfolk on uh, Bayview Avenue. Yeah. They, yeah. Do, they do good breakfast. They're I mean, not a breakfast spot. They're just a, you know, a restaurant, but they do I good need breakfast. Tries. I believe it's... Uh, Mom's Kitchen, right right next to... Uh, Scandals? Uh, An- Angie's Bakery. Sandals, whatever No, Angie's Bakery. It's Scandals, right well, next door. 
Here you go. Mom, well, mom's I, I, kitchen. Mom's I, 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 I kitchen. Thought, yeah, that's why I said mom's kitchen. Uh, it's literally Sorry. right next door to Scandals. But I thought I thought that was like on the other side of the road. No, they're right, like they're right next door to each other. Okay, like, Angie's okay. is here. I, I got like, you. It's, it's I, I thought strip. that was like on the other side of the the road. Like you think of alibis? Oh, yeah. it literally says it mom's the, kitchen and Scandals. It, yeah, yeah. Apparently it, they're okay. <laughs> the same thing. I it, did not it know that. Used to be the, the sports bar too. or whatever, like across the road. That's what I was thinking. Oh, there's this one uh, yes, place, that place next to a. Uh, Truck, not truck origin, we're tire choice stuck in my house. <clears throat> Holy shit, dude, you scared the crap out of me. <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> Amazon, getting us. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, Angie's Restaurant, and they've been open since like 70. That's quiet ass trucks, or man. Something like that. It and must be one of those new. Uh, How many boxes electric. are on the floor, Dennis? Just one. one. Just one, so it's not more boats. Look, man. It could be something sent from my brother. I don't fucking know. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> it's a good time to open it. <laughs> All right, Lauren, what'd you send us? Can you can you can you peek the peek the name on that box real fast? I will continue. Uh, number six is atypical entrees. Another strategy restaurants are using to cut costs without sacrificing taste is to spotlight traditionally less popular items that are more reasonably priced but can still be prepared with great flavors. Uh, he's preparing monkfish roasted with smoked apple bacon and tomato onion confit or cobia with wild <laughs> mushrooms. It's more boxes. They still owe us one more box. I just leave, think that's hilarious just... that we got. It was like, you'll get two on the 8th and one on the 6th. We got two on the 6th and maybe one will come tomorrow. I really hope that is boxes because I just chucked that shit across the room. Number yeah. seven, <laughs> reimagined desserts. Kind of covered that one already. Uh, number eight, smaller menus. Again, this See, is this is more of a business thing than a food uh, thing. A business model, and like I agree with smaller menus in the fact that do good things. Like I think, like when you go to like places, I'm just going to use like Cheesecake Factory. Oh, that's exactly. I was about to bring that up because like, let's face it, they do great 30, cheesecake. Thirty fucking page menu. It's like eighty. <laughs> It's like 40, 87 entree items or something. It takes you fucking 40 like, minutes just to, like, oh, three pages of appetizers. Okay. Dude, and then the server keeps coming back. I'm like, bro, I'm still in the appetizer section. I don't fuck. I know that. you know the whole menu. I have not <laughs> been here that often. <laughs> yeah, that's a little excessive. I've been there twice. Kind of uh, like, kind of like what, what's going on in the Crown Plaza. Like, he didn't take anything off the menu. He just, just expanded added, it and shit. I was like... We don't have the cross utilization thing. at least. No. Oh well, that sucks. Number Ow. nine. <laughs> this beer is disgusting. Those are delicious. <laughs> Number nine is tea time. Okay, is this like the real tea time? Like we're going back to like England, where you get like the little fingers foods and shit. And like, I when in doubt, pinky out. out. It's time for this comforting drink to transcend the cup. Chefs are using teas like hibiscus and chai, and they're cooking in various applications, from poaching fish to desserts and cocktails. This is a way to introduce flavor without making the end product too heavy. Dilly and I did, like, fucking tea chicken, like, fucking years ago, man. Like, it's not that new. I like yeah. marble tea eggs, but that's more of like a... Like we marinated, I stuck in chicken. Yeah, we I marinated chicken in sweet tea and then deep fried it. Yeah. That actually sounds good. Beer? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, beer. Delicious. Chase beer is, that Dennis loves and Chase does not. Chase is down there struggling. Man. Yeah, I went with this an espresso gave me the chills, dude. I went with an espresso porter, 6.5. 30 IBUs, I give it a 5. I was I was going coffee porter. Yeah, but now I think it's a chocolate porter. No, well, yeah, cuz no. I think it's cho- I think it's coffee, so it must be chocolate. But now now I'm thinking it's just smell. because I, that smell that taste. That, that's mm. probably why it's making me cringe like that. Like I like coffee, but like I, I cannot fucking stand espresso, dude. <laughs> you, would uh, not, you would not like coffee in the military, son. I am going to go. <laughs> I'm just going to go coffee. Nah, I'll just drink it black. Fuck espresso. Coffee porter. 56 IBUs. I'm going to say like 7.5%. I'll give it. A, hold on. I'll tell you in a second. Anybody else want to go by? Figure out what I want to rate this. I'm going gonna, gonna to ride the uh, espresso train. Other than that, right now, I don't got nothing. Give me a second. That's a good pork. dessert beer. It's a good dessert beer. I'll take whatever's left of that. Whenever we're done. When we're done, we'll send it your way. Um, fucking <laughs> ch- uh, chocolate porter. Fuck it. Seven percent. Sixty IBU. Give it a three. I like how I lean forward so you can get by, but my chair didn't. Give it a one five. <laughs> hey, let me get out of your way. Like my eyes are twitching. 
It's that espresso, bro. Down to me. <laughs> uh, dark chocolate porter. Ooh. Uh, I'm gonna give it a six point six. I, I do I, get a hint of like a dark chocolatey feel. But I'm gonna go with a twenty IBUs, and I'll give it a three and a half. I'm, I'm, I'll give it a three for my rating. I don't think, like, I could do this like yeah, in a snifter. This show will wake you the fuck up. Dude. I could do it in a snifter with dessert, but it's not like. I just need chases, ABV, and IBUs. Uh, IBU, I'm gonna go fucking ten. And uh, seven. Okay. Survey says. This is Burial by Burial Brew Company. Uh, I am going to go with the beginning is after the end. Coffee Porter. So the name might be the beginning is after the end. I'm not 100% positive. But it is a coffee porter. Uh, While you type, We shall travel along a jagged edge and into the mouth of utter chaos. The blood of sun shall drain from the sky. The chill of... Feels like it. The chill of the dark unknown shall set in. And in that moment, we shall open our eyes to Genesis. A project we always wanted to do, spawned through natural evolution of our craft. A new take on a promise we said we would someday fulfill. What that can look like? Yeah, we're trying to find I it. Don't, man, it looks like a fucking panther. Uh, it's black. It's a very dark can. Good luck. It's try, is there a search? Damn, they got a lot of pages. This is going to take a minute. Should we just go to... Why not just go back to search? Search burial. (sighs) Burial. Excuse me. Oh, my Amazon just told me that we got an Amazon package delivery. (laughs) Good job, guys. Ten minutes after the fact. (laughs) The Supposed to let us know before they get here? Coffee porter? Who's going to get it first? Oh. Nothing. How are you on burial and can't find the flagship? <laughs> it's a six and a half percent with twenty five IBUs. Uh, nailed an AB feet. And it so, is a coffee porter. When we're throwing out points, Dennis, what we got here so far as a total? Let's see here. Our porter. Porter. You only get porter if it says coffee, coffee porter. All right, so Jason got a point for coffee porter. Because I played it safe. I nailed the AV. Yeah, I shouldn't have... Uh, How many IBUs? Jumped on that. Is that 25? 25. Nobody got anything on that one. Yeah, go ahead and pass that one over to the butcher, Chase. Yeah, definitely. All right, so this one I'm more... I'm really butt. interested in on number uh, 10. African flavors? I am. I, I like, like, was it uh, berry berry chicken and stuff like that? Like... My dad's been on a huge Mediterranean kick with uh, Africa's Mediterranean. Uh, well, he, I was gonna go. He's uh, he's yeah. on the Moroccan thing. Yeah. That kind of blends the two. No, Morocco um, is like their own country. Morocco is its own country. It is, but I mean, again, kind of the as far as food styles go, I'd say well, I feel like it blends like, the two. I, yeah. I digress because Africa's continent. <laughs> you got that? <laughs> yeah. I, I wasn't gonna say anything because you knew Africa. <laughs> Oh God. Africa. We weren't doing Africa button with the clapping. Africa wasn't the subject of discussion, though. It was Africa foods. <laughs> well, but I'm saying we were talking about Morocco. Morocco it, is a part country. of Africa. We're, we're a country t- in Africa. You were yeah. thinking about the island. It's okay. <laughs> what island? What island? <laughs> not. Morocco. Not. not. It's Morocco and it's not an island. <laughs> not. <laughs> Not no. <laughs> you and Dooley with the Africa shit. Uh, <laughs> when we were driving out, when we were driving out over the causeway to Moss yeah. Island, like, it's like it looks like fucking Africa out here. It's just tall grass, and there's like one tree way the fuck over there. <laughs> <laughs> Number eleven, more Korean influence. Also not part of Africa. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> Nor an island. Number but. twelve, hibiscus. I feel like oh, it's man, been showing up a lot in beer right, lately. Do you yeah. want to just fly over Korean? Because I like Korean food. What do you want to talk about Korean food? I don't know, man. Like, how are, like, like, well, the Korean barbecue's definitely popped up hot. Yeah. Like, that's fucking popping up fucking everywhere. That hot pot, yeah. And I don't agree with me having to cook my own shit. 
I'm like, why it's like the, the great steak I, all over again. Why am I paying you so much for me to cook it? But then I've been to places where they, the the server is actually your chef, not hibachi, but like yeah. you have like the grill in the middle of your yeah. table, same style, and they come and cook it. And if they see you fucking with it, they run over immediately. Yeah. Kind of like, a, like uh, the place Troy took us to after. Yes, the, yes, yes. Uh, the the the, the something pig. Or something yeah, it's like the fat pig or something like that. And like where we needed two grills. But that's what happens when we hang out with the votes. But, <laughs> but, like, I see, like, the insurgents when they're talking about Korean food, but, like, like beef bagogi and all the bagogis. And, like, just, like, when I was in, like, the army, there was, like, Korean uh, takeout places, which would be mm-hmm. a lot like the Chinese restaurants around here. Like, I don't want to. Well, I'll use my so, favorite one, like like China just, Ocean, next, to, next gonna, to a food line. I was just going to be like, call it China Wall. There's probably one. Yeah. Fucking, number one? Th- yeah, there number is. one China. There yeah. you go. There's... And and they, but like you would go and like just get a whole fucking plates and like it would come like in your box like yeah. Chinese food, and but it was Korean and like they, it was fucking awesome. But I want to see more of that style as opposed to like me having to go and sit down and grill my own food. Right. <laughs> or can I just sit down and you just bring me out a plate of fucking beef and gogi and I'm gonna go ham. Like, <laughs> okay, sorry. Hibiscus. That's yes. cool. We're gonna we're gonna skip on past hibiscus and number thirteen. We're, we're gonna more plant based options. We're gonna skip that one too. Uh number fourteen, potato <sighs> milk. Uh okay. we've covered this one a little bit already as well. Number fifteen, a new hot sandwich. If 2020 was the year of fried chicken, sandwich, and restaurants rode uh, that wave through 2021, the next iteration to watch for is the Japanese Katsu Sando. Um, This is what you want to be eating in 2022. A deep-fried cutlet sandwich, typically made with pork. Yeah, we're ahead of this game. We're fucking Uh, slaying it! (laughs) (laughs) Japanese milk bread and tonkatsu, a fruit and vegetable sauce similar to a one. Uh, the katsu sando is going to show up in many forms on menus next year. With more local farmers raising pigs, this will be a welcome addition to the culinary landscape. Uh, yeah, we're fucking ahead of that one already. Slain Granted, it. we're not using a Japanese uh, milk bread bun, but we do have a Cur- uh, Filipino panda saw bun. And uh, yeah, you know what? Fucking ahead of the curve. We did do a fruit sauce, though. Like, we're back back in 2019 on We shit. stuck to our roots and went, you know, <laughs> bacon cheese sauce. But, I mean, you know. we didn't use, we didn't, I mean, we're not using, like, a potato milk to bread no. our fucking pork. Oh, no, 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 it was potato milk bread. Potato milk bread, which is why, so we used the panda sauce. So, anyway. Uh, number 16 is food with purpose. The trend of guests not wa- uh, not wanting just great food, but knowing that the dollars they spend help contribute to the great uh, good, uh, the greater good of the world... No, I said great good of the world. The great good of the world right. will continue into 20... I see, I just turned this, like, monitor. Into 2022, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so what, something... It's not just a taco you're buying. You are directly helping farmers in Mexico carry on their tradition of growing corn and supporting them. Like, aren't you supporting everyone when you buy... Like, okay, let's just use the corn tortilla because that's what what's in front of us. Well, no matter where it's the corn. Not, it's not just no, 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 no. See, your whole your whole premise is about to get shot down by the fact that it says at Manio or whatever that is, they make tortillas from heirloom corn. So there is a very specific corn that they are using to make their tortillas, which is why they are supporting local growers of heirloom corn. So I'm assuming much like wines like you can have heirloom grapevines that have been traditioned out like they use these all the time but i am curious so does that mean like is it non-gmo corn not for you know what i mean sale (laughs) if it's heirloom corn does that mean it's non-gmo corn because that would definitely make it a specialty item yeah What about the corn that's all the different colors? You're talking about like the Indian corn? Yeah. I don't know about that. I'm going to oh. go with that's definitely not GMO corn, if I had to guess. I thought um, it was. Well, Indian corn, no. No, that's like, that's original right. shit. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Like like the the red, yellow, blue, green. Look, look up what a lemon used brown, to Brown, like. blackish. As a matter of fact, no, really, no, no, no. I'm, pull that up. I totally understand. What? But, like, but I, I just never knew that look with, up with corn. What lemons used to look like? Because it's just weird. Like, looks like fingers and shit? Yep. 
I like bananas. I mean, bananas make more sense though. But lemons, lemon. Go to images. Don't just. Uh, I'm, I'm right there. Yep. Oh, nice. Fucking weird, right? D not even. That does not look like a lemon these days. Way not, harder to get I that mean, wedge yeah. on the fucking glass. <laughs> <laughs> right? I don't know. You can just slice one of the fingers. <laughs> just drop the finger in there? Like, I'm down. Fuck yeah, dude. I'm fucking down. But yeah, I mean, uh, honestly, that. Around Halloween. What, with those, you can slice the finger and have half of the finger inside your drink and the other half outside of it, and you can just flip it around. You can still. Or get... you can break one not half off and stick the other in. You can there. still get those lemons at the Asian market, by the way. Like the with all the fingers and shit, like nice. I've seen them, and like that knobby bitch over there, like that's like halfway through. Yeah, like, I've, the I've seen I've seen those before, but yeah. not not the finger shit. What's the, is that a watermelon lemon? What the fuck is that? That's more like grapefruit to me. I know, but they're calling it thirty different types. Now click on it. We gotta visit. Fuck man. <laughs> <laughs> There's thirty different types of fucking lemons. By the way, if we're gonna get technical, just to do a little, uh, you know, back to it two minutes ago, it's flint corn. Mm. The colored corn that I called Indian corn is yeah. flint corn, and I called it Indian corn because what the Indians brought to the pil uh, the Thanksgiving. Oh, sorry, we went different places. <laughs> uh, either one probably worked. <laughs> I want to see what a tortilla <laughs> looks like made out of that. Like, what color would it end up? <gasps> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Like, if you had like you know six different colors in your like. In your grandmother's kitchen, like with a mortar and pedestal, like just grinding corn. It's no fun with no pictures. Are we on a slow load? What's going on, Julie? I have no idea. Yeah, so all I really learned about flint corn is that you can eat it, which I already knew, uh, yeah. and it comes colorful. Heard. All right, so we have. Uh, oh. Let's. Oh, now, what is that called? A Barris lemon? Interesting. That definitely looks like a watermelon. That looks like what they would use to make Sprite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, think, I feel lemon? like that's the pink variegated. Uh, maybe. I mean, Meyer lemons are traditional lemons. Like you could, It's very similar. They're just a little bit bigger. Why well, my Sprite was found it, discovered in California. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> Burbank, of all places. I know, right. But the Meyer lemon, my uncle had a Meyer lemon tree in his backyard forever. Like, every time you went there, he'd just, like, please, take lemons. Yeah, and like, and he would give you, like, a plastic well, grocery bag full. Like, just take these damn things. Like, <laughs> sounds about right, Mike. Having a lemon tree, Verna. Verna is the one with all the fingers. When was that cultivated? Like, we got any years in that? Uh, nothing. Spain. Uh, not so. From Spain? No, that's Buda no. and lemons. Oh, shit. See, you gotta give me the... The name first, then the picture. I hate when they do it the other way around. All right, so let's crack a beer, and then we're going to pull up this last topic that's going to really tie Talk. this whole thing together. Okay. <laughs> the Ponderosa. I miss that restaurant. I don't know if I've ever been to that restaurant. I miss hey. that shit, man. That was, that was like Sunday night when we would go out as a family and everything. We'd always go to Ponderosa. I mean, like they had a but they had all you can eat salad bar and fucking that and the steak was good. Hey, random note: no one knows where yellows came from. Yeah, where the yellows come from? Oh, you no, Google. literally, no one knows where yellows came from. Like they're thought to have originated in northwestern India, but no one really knows. And apparently, yeah. the Arabs spread them everywhere uh, through the Mediterranean during the early second right. century. So, yeah, no one actually knows where lemons started. So they're like the Johnny Appleseed. I mean, well, like, did lime start in Persia? Is that what we're going with? I uh, will have to go back and look that one up. Take your friends, or give me the other cup. Like, mm. I like this trend today. Yeah, it's definitely a definitely a butcher trend. I know. Finally, I get, uh, finally, it's whenever I'm actually. Here. Well, I mean, look, like, yeah, right. Well, the one time you're here, like, one time you're not here, is like we get all these dark beers, and then like yeah. now you're actually here for Yay. the dark beer days. Um, so, uh, what we're gonna. What, what we're going to tie this all together with is dun, 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 dun. what food have you never had always wanted but just haven't had the opportunity to eat because Ortolan huh? Ortolan elaborate uh, French delicacy where you drown a bird in brandy okay. resuscitate it drown it fry it eat the whole thing under a napkin yep want to do that that's <laughs> 
It's not legal. It's not legal anywhere. It's not legal. That's Zimmerman. That ain't fucking him. Zim- no, Bourdain did it, and uh, it's in his book. Oh, he did. Okay. I am yeah. simply saying, you said, what did I want to try that I haven't had? That is, I want to do that. Okay, so something else. <laughs> Anything other than that. Like, all right, here's the plot to this story. It's like, we're going to figure out something, and then we're going to fucking do it. Like, not today, but we're going to see, but get it together. That's difficult, because anything that we want to do, we have probably done. I don't know. I mean, no one else has spoken. Well, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, that's why we have a beard. And you got time to think. So. I also like how I really, like, I gave you a direct and, answer to your question, and you're and like, I'm fuck, not, man! I'm God, I wasn't doing, expecting that one! I'm not doing that <laughs> one! It's something that we've actually talked about before, but, um... And we all we all like Mongolian barbecue, mm-hmm. but actually doing the Mongolian barbecue over a fire on a shield, and oh. doing it our like how we would make it. Okay, I mean I've done Mongolian that to order. That, um, I'm just trying to it, figure I, out the shield part. I, it obviously comes down to a. Like, like, I'm working it out it, in my head. Yeah, right now. I, I know. <laughs> it, it's not it's not like a, a dish that I've always wanted from somewhere or whatever. This and this and that. Or what. It, you know, I, I really can't think of too much because the best I can do. I mean, I, like I was going to say, I was going to say a tomahawk, but then we had a tomahawk at pho. We had one in my backyard. I'll say we had a bun in the backyard. Well, that too, but like the first one we I had was it. at pho, with the, like that I had, and I was like, holy shit! Like they're over here fucking making like we're. I was watching them making tomahawks. And the best like, I can do for you right fuck. now is a fire pit and a couple walks. I'll work on the shield part, but that's what I got right now. But I don't have like a. Just found it out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a paella pan, so like that was my next go-to. Yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> but I mean, we could do this. <laughs> Main reason why I brought it up is because we have talked about it before. I mean, we got to find us some good sticks. From when we had that chick from fucking Army of One, where she was carving it with her axe, she found in a tree at random. <laughs> I can't do. I can't have the one that I want. Nothing. Nothing you've ever. Uh, I want it, but I can't eat it. Well, if it has <clears throat> fucking mushrooms, in yeah, it. that's why I said I can't have it. Oh, you want like a Wellington? Yeah. I mean, we could fucking make a Wellington without mushrooms. I mean, we'll make two. Because let's be honest, that duck sauce <laughs> gonna happen. <laughs> I mean, and I've I've had uh, <clears throat> multiple like the. Nugget asked me to do a Wellington, and I was like, well, if you bring over a fucking tenderloin, I'll, I'll take care of the rest. <laughs> when I say I take care of the rest, Butch, I need you to fucking go yeah, I know. They already know. clean this. They already know. <laughs> I don't want to do it. I, I can. Look, I just don't want to. I had to look up the He'll do it name. fucking five times faster than me. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kuragi. All right, so elaborate. Jellyfish. Mm. Okay. Is it a specific jellyfish? And can we there find it at the are Asian market? A few right. jellyfish that you could eat, but I mean, can we find that at the Asian market? I mean, can we find that at the Asian market? I, or do I got to do I got to ask my bootleg friends? I think you can ask your neighbor. <laughs> I was about to... just just double checking. Same, same, but different. I mean, I, you know, I got to talk to my people in New York. Like you know, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Talk to those people. Don't. You know, the, <laughs> you know, the secondary like, family like, out yonder. <laughs> you talk to your people in New York. I'm gonna go swimming. I'll be back in 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if these are edible, but I got some jellyfish. I'm gonna go watch the UFC fight. <laughs> I got stung right. like seven times, but yo, here's like, do, ten do pounds you, of jellyfish. I'm, I, I, this is a dish I'm not aware of. Let's talk about this beer. Oh, you, there's another snack that you didn't open last week. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about this beer. Let's open a snack. Let's uh, well, Dooley figures out how the fuck we create this thing, or, even, or, or what we got to do. Seven fifty, dude. That sounds so fucking easy. Why don't you just go to that restaurant? I'm going to Brown it's Ale. Seven fifty. It'd be way cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> right? Are you going to Brown Ale? Right uh, last time we were thinking like y'all were on like Mars and thing, but this might be a Mars and. But I'm still going to go to Brown Ale. Brown Ale. I'll give it a, a two and a, I'll give it a three. And uh, ABV, I'm going to go with a 6.3. IBUs, probably not going to find any, but I'll give it like 10. I went with a uh, brown ale. Oh. In your Google search. Good brown ale, 6%, 15 IBUs, 3.5. Got a little freedom. 
I'm also following the brown ale train. Uh, I as well. I think I'm going to go with a 5.6. And I'm going to say it's a little bitter. I'm going to give it like 32 IBUs. Uh, and I'll give that a 3.5. Not really my cup of tea, but just not bad. I'm going to go 5 and just 5.5. And, a half. and Price is right, bro. Evidently, bro. <laughs> And what do you say, 32? I'm going to go 31, I believe. Mm-hmm. 30, 31? <laughs> God, at least go to 30. Fuck. No, I, I, yeah. I'm just going to say, just leave it. Uh, I'm not a big fan of brown ales. This one's okay. Uh, I'll give it a, a three. We haven't had we haven't had any like really spectacular beers today. <clears throat> nah, I mean, for real. This Miller Lite, though. We had some spectacular sodas. I'd rather have a red ale than a brown ale. I'm with you. But then sometimes, like, when you, like, I used to be, what's the, Killian's? Yep. Yeah, like, Irish Red. That, that's where I'm going. I, I used to, Irish Red. I used to be a fan of that, but then I think I drank it too much. Yeah. And then it started having, Same. like, a coffee flavor. Same. It. Like, I don't know if they changed the recipe or if it was just me. Um, but, yeah. It, yeah. I used to, Killian's was one of my, like, if I wasn't drinking Yingling, am I like go to like oh beer people don't really drink kind of thing? The oddity, I'm gonna go for a Killian's and I'd grab a fucking case of that shit and yeah. See, like right now, I'd rather move over to like an Asian beer as to an Irish beer right now. Like it's just like I think Asian beer lighter, crisper. And like and that's what I'm into right now. Like yeah. I'm sure this will run its course, and I'll switch. I'm gonna say uh, <laughs> brown ale. I can dig that. Six <clears throat> percent. Really been wanting some uh, twenty IBU, and I'll give it a three. Some really good, really really good sake. Well, it sounds like we got it. Well, now see, uh, I don't know. We can do sake. We can make sake. Fuck it. Yeah. Oh. I don't know how. Yeah, no, um, we are not making sake. But like Alex says, no. So I, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure our friends. What do in, we need? Rice. I'm pretty sure our friends in, in New vinegar? York. I'm pretty sure our friends in New York can get their hands on some like real official see, shit. Uh, see again, like I'm not a sake fan because I feel I've, like I've, it I've, starts I've to really, taste like fingernail polish. I really like sake. Sake tastes like fingernail warm, polish. Warm plum sake, wine. warm sake, or warm plum wine. I mean, plum? rice wine or plum wine. I mean, mix. I, I'm I'm down with both. The but, mix is where it's at. But like, why are you so against making sake? Is it illegal? No, it's fucking hard. I mean, like, this is not like we're making it in a day. Like, this is, it took take us a couple like months. a month to make fucking. Like, do we just got to bury a pot in my backyard? No. Nope. You got to extract the oils from the rice. Like this is it's a process. I mean, like we're talking going through like sheets of cheesecloth. Like it's not easy. And we'll I'm also going to go with, that's one of those things that, again, dealing with, like, bacteria, and I don't know if it deals with yeast in particular, but a lot could go wrong. A lot could go right. I'm not reading any of those. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, you didn't get, a, like, a fucking five-step process? <laughs> nope. but like, yeah, I'm not talking about, like, making it, but, like, if we can... I don't even know, like... I'll look it up on YouTube. Later. I don't even know, like, good, like, top brands, like... I don't know, but there's... Mid-shelf shit is really fucking decent. I had to check this out because there are three types Can we of, get it at the ABC store? There are three, yes. three levels, I guess you would say, of sake. You can get it at fucking uh, Food Line and shit. See, but we gotta get the good shit. Well, I so know. We gotta go to the Asian makes market. A difference. But makes a difference. You, can, you can get it at the Asian market. You can, um... What is it? Uh, fuck. It wasn't Food Line. Uh, there was another like actual like grocery store that you, that you can go and get it from. Piggly Wiggly? I think it was Kroger. Kroger. Kroger's probably a good place to yeah. start. Harris yeah. Teeter. It's probably in the wine section. Yep. Like, that, that's where it is in Kroger. I mean, the, the teat up the street. Like that. Teat up the street. The teat up the street has a pretty substantial wine section. <laughs> we could probably find it there. We got to, like, do you just, like, do you heat it up in, like, a kettle? Boiling pot of water. Talk about talking. Yeah, but boiling pot of water. Keep talking. I'll come back to you. I'm working on it. (laughs) Boiling pot of water. We're we're ready to talk about the beer. You 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 take the bottle. So many things happening right now. Take the bottle. You put it in warm, like rolling boil. 
water on, on the stove. You just put the pot or the bottle inside the pot. Crack it open first, right? Yes. Just for everyone at home. Sorry. Sorry. Pressure. Yeah. Thought, <laughs> thought, we were, thought we were all on the same page. But um, Let's talk about yeah, the people who don't know. People anything. at home. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> but, um. Son of a bitch. Chase. <laughs> anyways. The rolling boil. To keep it kind of like. Just chilling for like fifteen minutes. Well, well I'm Not sure there's even. a temp. We'll go through the whole fucking YouTube class before we do this. Well, I'm just yeah, gonna let you know that while I'm pot. while I'm scrolling through this, it's the following morning. Drain and steam. Two days later, twelve hours have gone by. Like this is a. Not a daily, like, we're not going to be able to do this in any type of uh, short time frame. It does say... You're talking about making it, right? Yeah, making yeah. it. Bro, right? I got an Instapot. It does say a lot of people get freaked out and saying that it is more doable than people think. But again, this is not something that we're going to be doing. Like, it. this is intensive. Mm-hmm. And you got to actually take care of what you're doing. And again, it like, also... pay attention to what you're doing. There's also doing. levels of, like, are we just going to make cheap shit? Because we could probably make some cheap sake. I mean, we making money on, like, is it, like, moonshine? Yeah. We're making that booze farm Just, just without here. the distilling process. It's it's, it's basically... A cheese, it's a cheesecloth process versus a distilling process. I mean, you're basically cooking rice, putting it in a cheesecloth with yeast, getting it, letting it grow, and then, like, it... Yeah. It. You, you can make it more potent, but that depends on the bacteria and the system. The basic <laughs> fermentation is completed after nine days. Okay. Doable. Then you have to allow it to rest for another five days. After those five days pass, then it becomes ready for the next step. Yeah. Yeah, okay, let's move on. Yeah. yeah. To the beer. It's a, it's a 12 step process. So this is <laughs> Bird Song Brewing Company's Lazy Bird Brown Ale. They are out of Charlotte, North Carolina, and they do have a little story here. I will read that. Uh, this is our Lazy Bird Brown is the perfect beer for any <clears throat> seasonal rich mahogany in color with hints of coffee and chocolate. This American style brown ale's both smooth and sessionable. You'll discover a mild citrus hop flavor paired with pleasant aromas of roasted malt, making it a great brew for all occasions. You guys need fucking periods. Uh, <laughs> maybe those are periods. This is really tiny. Uh, it is 5.5%. I do not have IBUs. 45. 45. I did say it was high, but didn't go high enough. Who came closest? I mean, we all went brown, right? That was yeah. it. Yeah, we went brown. Everybody went brown. Go brown, you never brown. Is it 5.5? Jason got that. Jason got it. You went one over. Yeah, I was. I know like I did. Six, Fucking three or price is right in me. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking price is right in me. You're fucking right. It's a game. Closest without going over. It's a game. <laughs> so, what's the score so far? Thus far. While you're doing that, I'm just going to yell out a question. Chase, you ready? Nope. You're going to leave. <laughs> All right, two to one. Because <laughs> the points matter. Yeah. <laughs> so, you got, oh yeah, let's do, do that. Let's do that. So on my travels up northern Virginia, I found uh, they're called jalapenos. They're, it's a corn tortilla chip with jalapeno pepper from uh, I guess the name of the company is Diana. But they. I had never seen them before, so I figured to heck, you know. We're always trying something new on the farm. <laughs> the party cast. Take some around and pass it. While we're passing, here's a question for you. What are known as black diamonds and located by pigs and dogs Truffles. in the Umbria oh. region of Italy? Truffles. Can you grab that for me? Did you drop it again? I didn't drop it. It was knocked off the table. I was say, did I do that? Yes, you did, but that's okay. It is truffles. It was yeah. Diana's fault. Well, all I heard was black diamonds. All Specifically, I... black truffles. Yeah. Uh, what wine is a classic match with foie gras? 
Mm. Yep, nope, nobody's fucking getting that. Port. Good luck. Shiraz. Chardonnay. Good luck. Keep guessing, go ahead. I guarantee you, you're not even going to name it. I mean, like... French word. Yep. Riesling. French sauternaires. I, I said Sauternay? French. I don't know, well, whatever. So, while we had you distracted, Glee <laughs> pulled this up. <laughs> Trigger to this one. I mean, not super expensive. And since we were talking about the before you order any of this, you and I to... mean this before you order any of this, we should probably check state laws. Do you want to? You, you want This pr- is Virginia for private use. They're fucking selling. We it. should. Yeah, it doesn't mean shit. I don't care. What the fuck is Marijuana that? places will send fucking weed to you even before it was legal. Guess what? Yeah, yeah. I'll take your money. I don't give a fuck if uh-huh. you can use it or not. That's not my problem. Yeah, I understand, but I there understand. are there are microwave companies that sell to businesses that are not allowed to sell to residential areas. You can buy one and have it sent to your house. I'm just saying you're not it, allowed to use it. I'm just saying if it's, a, it's allowed um, in Virginia and sold in Virginia, buy it. Your state and local laws should apply before we move on with this conversation. Right. <laughs> but evidently, it is possible to buy a distilling kit on Amazon for like $175, <laughs> like at the high end. That one, like, I mean, go down. There's like, yeah, so there's multiple variations. And like, I mean, not for retail purposes, obviously, but for, you know, your personal consumption of, you know, your bourbon. I mean, if we can get a bur- How much is a bourbon each barrel? Or a bourbon barrel? You can probably get that from fucking Amazon. Oh, uh, shit, you know, right? I was better look on it anyway. <laughs> like, but, you know, an eight-gallon distillery running you, you know, $175, you know, to anyone... I mean, like, yeah. Why can so, you buy this on here? Yeah, it's like two hundred thirty-nine dollars for a bourbon barrel, and like, you can just age your shine in and make your own bourbon. I mean, for personal consumption, of course. Well, I like the one, like, see, ten liters, and that's plenty. American oak. It's got a little side stand. Like, we're good. We're good there. I was just saying, it's available. Check your local laws for for listings. Virginia specifically states it is illegal to own a still regardless of its use. There is a $450 a year, like, uh, fee you can pay if you want to own a... or Basically, in order to make it legal to distill alcohol in Virginia, you have to pay $450 if it's less than 5,000 gallons. You still cannot sell it. Less than 5,000? I'm talking about eight. It's less than five thousand. Four hundred fifty bucks. All right, so I guess we're gonna have to make five thousand and one. So if you, you guys, want to buy, if you, you guys need to start buying knives. If you want to buy, <laughs> if you want to buy one hundred and fifty dollars still, you gotta it, plan on spending six hundred dollars because you gotta spend another four fifty just to be able to do it. I'm just saying. It's I want to buy this. Is that a sink? Yep. That Again, I'm I'm totally not against the the distilling. I'm just not trying to get fucking like we talk about it on the podcast. All of a sudden, we get raided. <laughs> What the fuck happened? Oh, you guys are illegally producing alcohol. Like, the fuck we are. No, we do not. Oh, sure. Even if you're just making distilled water? Just saying. <laughs> just asking a question. Well, that did specifically talk about alcohol, so I <laughs> don't know. If I want to distill my own water... Have at it. <laughs> it shit. says distilling alcohol. Shit, it used to be fucking illegal to fucking collect rainwater, so I was like, oh shit. Is it still... Some not- places it still is. Yeah. Is it illegal here? Yeah. It's illegal in Virginia Beach to collect rainwater? Uh, yep. In certain it, parts, yeah. Because it keeps the HRSD from providing you with rainwater. Just yeah. like it, yep. even if you get, um, what is it, like the Tesla home solar panel shits. I think they updated it now, yeah. but a couple okay. years ago, if you made too much power, you actually had to pay the power company for the extra power that you made. Yep. I think they should say you for the extra power you made because it's probably going back into the I believe they're grade. trying to fix that, which again, I'm not sure where they stand on that now, but I do know that for a while, if you made too much power, you had to pay for the extra power you were putting into the grid. Let's talk about the Dollar Tree. The Dollar 25 tree? Did they yeah. raise the price? Yes, Is that yeah, what's did. going on? Yes. I haven't been to the Dollar Tree in a... Pretty soon it'll be Tree Fitty. Tree Fitty? Tree Fitty. I want it Tree Fitty. 
Uh, but yeah, no, they raised it to a dollar twenty-five, and apparently they did a uh, you know survey, and a bunch of people said they didn't give a fuck. So yeah, the quarter. No, I mean, but hey, that's like a fucking one hundred and twenty-five percent cost raise. It's a twenty-five percent cost raise. However, you want to look at it. <laughs> No. I mean, it would have to be 225 to be 125% no. raise. See, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you something as, uh, as uh, to how this works. Because if it was a dollar, mm-hmm. and you times it by 1.25%, then That's, you get 1.25. That's that, 125%. Your math is bad. Yeah, it's, One, a 25, it's a dollar. Okay, a dollar. So you break a dollar. Times 125% is 1.25. You're doing it wrong. Would you like to do it on the calculator and show me how it's done differently? Because a dollar, you're already paying. Yes. They added a quarter. You're looking at it as it's a 25% cost raise. I'm saying it's technically 125% of what you were paying. You're going to pay 125% either way. You were going to pay 100% when you went in the fucking door, unless you're, like... That's what I'm saying. We're talking about two different meth things. Meth-head Marge, and she's getting, like, you know, two or three things in her fucking pockets, and she's catching <laughs> the discount. I'm not doing it wrong. You're looking at how much more you're going to pay. I'm looking at how much more is the overall cost. It's... Two, it's, it's very not, fine line of two different things. It's not a fucking... They didn't raise the cost of something 125%. They raised it 25%. See, there's where you're wrong. If you raise the cost, it's 200%. Now you're paying double what you would. So the cost is 125% of the original. Because you're paying the original plus 25 more percent. Am I? The price did not go up 125%. It went up 25%. Yes. But the cost is now 125%. Because it cost you 25% more. You're paying the 100 plus 25% yeah. more. It cost you 100% to buy the fucking product. Plus the 25%, it 125%. It cost you, all right, a case of beer cost you nineteen ninety nine. You go up there and you pay nineteen ninety nine. well, plus tax. tax. We're, we're going to leave we're gonna skip tax. tax from this. I'm surprised you didn't go 20. would have been easier. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just because I just bought beer and it was nineteen ninety nine. And so if you pay nineteen ninety nine, you're paying 100%. Yes. If you add six more dollars, we're going to call that 25 because it just is good math. Whatever. Easy math. It's, it's probably like five. But, uh, you know, if you add five dollars, yes, you're adding 25%. But when you go to buy it, you're paying 125% of the original cost. Both ways are correct. We are arguing the exact same thing. What I'm telling you is you saying there's 25% more. I feel like I'm what saying you're saying is the way you're saying it is wrong. <laughs> Do it on the calculator. The I, way I, I'm I saying understand. it literally works. It's, it's, you're doing. Your way of doing math. My way of doing math is math. <laughs> you, I'm so fucking... This crazy. is a word problem, and apparently word problems fuck Jason in high school, because it's not the same question. You're asking how much the price went up, I'm saying how much you are paying in total. The price went up 25%. Yes! You are paying 125% for the same product, though. It, like, the price went up 25%. That, that's like saying, <laughs> like, for a, for a word problem, like, for this distance, how much gas did I use... And or how m- how many like what mile an hour did I go for this distance? Is damn near the same thing. Like, yes, yeah, it, it, it's same same but different. It's just a different word terminology being used. Again, we're saying the same thing no two one, separate ways. No one is ever gonna look at it like I just paid one hundred twenty one hundred twenty five percent of this bag of Doritos because they raised the price twenty five cents. I do. That's exactly how I well, look at it. Well, if you look at it as in like. I just paid for this item as in whole, and then I paid the tax, which was a twenty five percent tax. Like, no, because when you left fucking the Dollar Tree, it was a dollar ten. Here's how <laughs> hold on. I got it. Here's how I'm gonna explain it. This is perfect. Dollar Tree. It's a dollar, right? You go in, you pay a dollar. That's a hundred percent. Now, if they hit you after the fact and say, "Wait, it's twenty five cents more now," that's twenty five percent raise. Now, if I go in and it's a dollar twenty five, I'm paying the whole one hundred twenty five percent up front. That's the only difference as to what's going on here. Is like, that you're like, saying like, like it's an the, add-on, and I'm saying it's a whole thing. The hundred percent is the cost of the item itself, and Plus then everything, the and then everything added on is that Team extra, like either tax or like cost of right. like them bringing it in, like gas prices, like the Dollar Tree did not raise their prices 125 percent. They raised their prices 25 percent. Yes. yes, but in total, you are that. you are paying 125 percent of that. 
because yes. you are paying for the cost, you're which is one hundred percent product, and you're paying that twenty five percent up charge. Jesus, that, that they. My fucking brain. <laughs> That's why I shut up for a while. I was just like, all right, I got to gather everything. <laughs> Holy shit. As always, guys, thank you for listening to Team Fat Kid Choose You the just fat. made somebody crash their car doing that fucking math. Sorry, Lauren. <laughs> you can find us on Facebook at... Team Fat Kid. On Instagram at... Team Fat Kid Nation. On Twitter. At Team Fat Kid 1. On YouTube. Team Fat Kid. And, of course, you can find us online for all of your knife and apparel needs at www.teamfatkidnation.com. Christmas is coming soon. Make sure you get those knives. Uh, uh, still. <laughs> remember, you can find the food truck on Facebook. Team Fat Kid Food Truck. You can find us on Twitter. Half that underscore truck. Got you. On Instagram. Team Fat Kid Food Truck. Remember. Oh, no. Sorry, I left one out. I left one out. I left one out. You can always... Pre-order or for your catering needs, call us at 757-427-1586. Oh, so ready to be ready. Stay hungry. Don't forget. So oh, damn. <laughs> Stay hungry. Be creative. And don't forget to sharpen your knives. It's fucking Thursdays, man. <laughs> damn, bro. I swear to God. Peace, bacon, grease. It's fucking be fucking day. season 20 when we actually finally get this shit right. <laughs> we did it so good on Monday. It's the weather and time change, man. Praise fucking the Lord. everybody out. this bitch. It's past my bedtime. It got dark. I've been down with a battery with no photo edit And I'll take an exit, uh Hug your curb, down shift to third Take those off, we take off, uh Once was well behaved, yo, Bobby's wig, watch that